Hello and welcome to The Skating Lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Byer. Hi, Dave. You know I love this sweater. I love Thank this sweater. Privia. Yeah. Yes, Godzilla. This is this and that. We're going to be discussing everything that happened at the 2022 Russian Junior Figure Skating Championships and breaking down the show Meddling on Peacock. Cannot wait. You're having a great day, Jonathan. And really like a relaxed Mr. Rogers vibe with your sweater. Oh, sweater. yes. Yes. Uh, Welcome to my neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> This was my skating sweater for, it became my skating sweater last year, so I didn't really wear it on the show, but I got it washed and was like, I should wear it before it has to be, you know, retired because of being yeah, stressed. Amazing. Yeah, amazing. Amazing. Yeah. yeah, it has a nice, like, skating costume quality to it that I like very much. Yeah, oh, well, thank you. Um, it probably has trauma associated with it. You know, in each and every, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was at the ice. Anxiety house. is <laughs> woven right into mine. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Alas, alas. Oh, yes. Okay. Well, Jonathan Medley, I just have to say, Tara Lipinski deserves another gold medal for marrying Todd Kapotsky and putting this together for all of us. It is the greatest figure skating documentary I have ever seen. I was a little bit worried during episode one when they had these modern dance reenactments that disappeared and great characters emerged and great shots, yes, yes. editing, <clears throat> fabulous little nuances to each and every episode that were really fantastic. And I've already got many ideas for what I want to see. I think- uh, Well, even I, in the introduction with like Nate Bartholomew, I was like, where is this going? And I got a little nervous also, but was happy to see that that was brief and that's not the avenue they took. Because again, you're right. How many skating documentaries do we really get? outside of like my beloved magic memories on ice. Like we get these watered down lowest common denominator stories about that Tanya and Nancy. True. That is not true. We have gotten some- Which one are you thinking of? Okay. I don't like the Surya ones, you know that. No. Mm -hmm. The one on Tanya on 30 for 30 was a barn burner, okay? Yeah. At, yeah. And the one on Peacock was also quite good on that one that had Nancy as a part of it. You can now watch it on, uh, Peacock is called Tanya and Nancy. The Price of Gold is the one that was at, uh, was the one, um, the ESPN one. And they were both good. One of them had Mary and Evie in it. Uh, and you got to see, learn that Evie knocked over a lamp in the uh, hotel room. And it's just fantastic. So okay. I love it. It's like seeing old friends. And I, I love, but this one really took it up a notch. We had just seen one that was exciting. That was on, it was Bad Sport. It was on Netflix. And it was where Moscovina did yes. this. It was very interesting because... Last year during um, during COVID, I don't remember exactly, it's such a blur, like when things happened during COVID, I was called by someone that wanted to do a podcast on this and they were like pitching it to NBC. And at some point they said, oh wait, there's gonna be a documentary. So they had done a pre-interview, they were gonna schedule the real interview. And then I guess this was in the works. So right. uh, very exciting. Uh, I know that there's also something coming forward that's gonna be a podcast series about um, LGBT, athletes in I think in figure skating they're doing all different episodes or one is like a gay history or I don't know that I know lots of things in the works you know for the next couple of weeks I think will be very exciting for everyone to uh, watch so um, but yeah I think this was fantastic I want to hear your thoughts break it down for me I have so many conflicting <laughs> thoughts uh, obviously we can touch a little bit about we've judged that event I think it's I'm trying to remember this. We did this on Patreon. Did Were we in agreement? I don't remember. This is one of those events where Jonathan, my head and my heart and my sense of like, I have a lot of conflicting feelings about this event. And if you ask me on the day, which team I think is better, that might be different than which team I think deserve to win or which team I think would win under the way that skating is judged now, but how skating was judged then and how it was performed on the night, I think are all very different discussions. Correct. Um, but and, you know what is interesting? And this really reminded me of it because we we have talked at length. I mean, are we supposed to say, no, you have to join Patreon to find out what we thought. Yeah, <clears throat> it's not what you think. Okay, <laughs> however it boils down. Um, the conversation always becomes to this hyper analysis of, was there an error on the double axle? Who did what? 
blah, 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 Marie, Brand, all this sort of stuff. What was the most eye-opening for me was when we judged also on Patreon the 1998 dance event. And I loved that this talked about the Ukrainian judge on the panel. Marie Balkov. Mm-hmm. And so it was Selena interesting. Selena probably a great judge. I don't <laughs> well, know that. I don't know that for a fact. There are some well, things he'll help you out. Yeah. Okay. If he's on your side, I guess. Um, so what was interesting is when we went back to 98, mm -hmm. and even Mark Hemreddy, who was judging with us, sort of had to admit, wow, this really was a bit of a farce. This, this discipline was somewhat of a judging farce in this period of time before IJS really helped evaluate it. So we are always looking at pairs, pairs, pairs. But really what caused all of this, in my opinion, was, every, was the mobster guy trying to help Marina in ice dance. Supporting her. Right, right. Dave, please wait, support wait, wait. me in such a way if I'm ever in a competition. <laughs> <laughs> mobster guy. So it really upset. It really upsets me when no one in gymnastics realizes that Jordan Childs had this coach named Erica, who she called abusive, who allegedly was driving under the influence at the ranch and got banned from the ranch, a place where you could molest anyone. This coach, no problem. Got, yeah, this coach got banned from. But no one has really made the connection that this is the same freaking coach that tied the lace for Tanya. I mean, can you imagine, Jonathan? Think about the people that this woman is associated with. Tanya Harding, Jordan Childs, Jordan's mother who's in jail for stealing funds that she allegedly perhaps funded her daughter's career and or clothing line with, yes, and Marta Caroli. If this person is not a legend and worth her own episode of a Todd and Tara documentary, I don't know who is, okay? okay. <laughs> perfect for this Olympic mm. world, okay? Yeah, it's true. We need to make all of these connections, <laughs> okay? This man, this mobster, um, Tuk Takanoff, Taiwan chick, as they call him, little Taiwanese, um, Jonathan, he was also listed, if you read the New Yorker article about the Steele dossier, which was the, uh, dossier that was first funded by one political campaign and then taken over by another that had to deal with the election in 2016 and all of the Russian ties. Um, he was also a part of a gambling um, situation, a legal gambling ring that was being run out of Trump Tower, if you read certain reports. I mean, this man is just yeah. iconic. He's just yeah. in, in all of our worlds. He probably enjoys a Miss Universe pageant that you're probably judging. <laughs> you know, I just love it all. No, okay? they don't do talent. They don't do talent in Miss Universe, so they don't need me. Okay. But yes, I, but again, it was from his connection with Marina. Like it was such, pairs were oh. such the afterthought here. And so we always yeah. looked to the pairs event. But Marina's all of this was- mother was a pair skater in the 72 Olympics. Her father, a hockey player, her brother, also a professional hockey player. And like, she dated like the Prince of Monaco or something. An interesting person, an interesting person in the... Who, quite frankly, in my opinion, when you look at the season going in, this is like, again, the, the weird blip that no one puts together with the Tanya Nancy story is that somehow Nancy was the only person in the way of Tanya's Olympic gold is also the same way. In Tanya's mind. Pardon? Perhaps in Tanya and Jeff's mind. Perhaps. I was like, you had like seven other people, you six other people you need to figure out too. But here, Marina was not in any danger of losing this Olympic gold medal. She, she was, was winning everything that season until the Grand Prix final when they had to do that cockamamie extra free dance and extra free skate for everybody that she lost to Born and Kratz, who were never going to take the Olympic gold medal from them. She beat the Russians at Europeans so leading in. Lomachova. You have to realize that they're also judging rumblings. And like anything, they knew when the panel came out that there was no French judge on that panel. Now, Jonathan, do I believe that this is the only deal that was made at the Olympics? No. 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 I think perhaps it was the most overt and the one with the most skilled players in it. 
and the most outlandish. I think that these deals are likely made all the time by certain federations, really, but other one, and I think other ones try to do it. I think some federations are playing chess while others are playing checkers, right? Um, some certainly if you have, you know, former satellite countries on your side. Uh, I think that in North America, as Frank Carroll told us, uh, Canada is not the friend of the US. Uh, perhaps at many times they have differing agendas and they cannot get lockstep with one another. Um, and I think we've seen this uh, time and time again. Uh, certainly there were a lot of claims about the ice dance in 2014. There have been claims about what happened at the 2014 Olympics with Sotnikova and Kim Yuna. Uh, I think we see it, <laughs> the judging of Vincent Joe at the Olympics in 2018 from the American judge. I mean, there are different things that happen over time that you put, but the, in terms of deals being made, I think absolutely they happen. But I think that this one <laughs> was more brazen and I think that the key to all of this is that DDA just can't shut his mouth. He didn't, and he couldn't shut his mouth. Well, like Tanya's bodyguard guy. Yes. Right? It's, if you could just shut up for two seconds, you might have actually gotten away with it. Yeah. There was too much bad blood between DDA and this. You know, what people forget is that they only look at the French judge and the Russian judge in Salt Lake but there were three other judges who also voted for- Thank you. This is a really important piece of the puzzle that's always missing in this conversation. In the same way we've all decided, it's Jan Hoffman who decided to give Oksana the gold medal alone. And it was like, well, there are four other people here and you can talk about block judging. Tell me what former Soviet Republic China is. China had a pair in the, in the mix here. Like they're now, not gonna be China? messing with fire. No, I think that- Listen. Do you think, think China needed the boost for the bronze so that the Russians didn't finish I above think, them? Listen, do you think that the Russians are above trying to put two of their own pairs? Listen, if you have two teams in striking distance of the podium, why wouldn't you go for two? You could know that the Chinese are going to go for a throw, a quad sal, and potentially fall and try to do that. I'm not saying it happened. I'm saying it could have happened. And I'm saying in skating, and offense is your defense. I think that you have to do what you do on the ice. And I think that the reality is, is that all of these federations do campaign and influence and talk and make deals and sit together at practice. If you've read different books about judging and things that happen. So <laughs> listen, just look at the way that the votes went. You know, I think that in one hand, I think Moskvina can act like she knew nothing because maybe this stuff happens all the time behind the scenes that these coaches don't need to know. They just have to campaign and be likable and sell their pair and be smart. Uh, if you read the book- All of which she has done in space. Oh, yeah. if you read the second mark, whenever they would have events in St. Petersburg, she's always throwing parties at her apartment for all of the officials and she would kick everyone out out of an hour and bring in another whole set of people. Why do you do that, Jonathan? because you're brilliant and you're campaigning for your students. I, I get that. And it's not even anything overt. It's good favor. It's good politics. Yeah. It's good everything, right? It's... But to me, in general, like that's, it's, it's, a, it's a thing that, gosh, I don't even know how, how to word it. How many fluff pieces did you see about Oksana being an orphan before the Olympics? Why'd you see those, Jonathan? Yeah, but I think that moment can help at a crossroads. So, for instance, if, if they skated fairly, if, if they both skated well, which they basically did, and you're at a crossroads, and someone like DDA is like, give it to the Russians, and you feel like it could go one or the we've judged several where it's like, I don't know, depending on the mood I'm in, it could have gone either way. In those moments, of course, you'll be swayed by something else. But um, the argument here was they made it seem like it was so overtly perfect, and there was this is another documentary that basically told us they had no choice but to win. The Canadians were undoubtedly this enormous winner. And again, yeah, they probably it. they it won the night. It was a very commercial program. The early aughts were a very commercial time. 
you know, but um, I, I loved uh, um, Elena's comment when she was like, it's a love story. I didn't really see any love. And I was like, thank you. That's correct. That's my problem with this. Now, Marie pretending it had something to do with the fact that it was recycled is incorrect because- And they all say it's from three years before it was a two-year program. And they said that, now the funny thing is with all of this, John, people want to talk about the transitions in the Barish Nye and Seeker Leads a program. Moscovina recycled all of those transitions from their programs in 98, 99 and 99, 2000, and that she had done with a million other pairs before. So as much as everyone's acting like they have a brand new program every freaking year, they're like rearranging stuff. It wasn't wildly original in the free skate. The short program was. The short program and was so mad. beautiful. And then he comes out with like the lipstick on the collar. Again, it's more just kind of like, okay, we get it. Excuse me, like, we're talking about Paris Night and Secret Leads a short program. The Canadian short program. gorgeous really compared to this kind of trite. It was, it was like worthy of ice wars. I'm sorry. That yes, that's, it felt like pro skating. Even the love story had sort of this like cheese, cheesy thing to it that, that I just inherently go rushing in my I, aesthetic. You watched their other programs from the last year. And the, you know, everyone thinks of the Olympic moment, right? So you try to do something that's a little bit more commercial, a little bit more uplifting. And Jamie and David, it's really hard because the more Jamie Sale opens her mouth, or you've read her tweets, it's hard to unsee things, right? And it's with, with, with 2020 goggles on, it is really hard to not kind of root for the Russians a bit? Because you're like, wait a second, wait a second. Like she's queuing on and like skates like it, you know? Like, yeah, it's just, yeah. It's Although <laughs> she's now inclined to think there is conspiracy everywhere. <laughs> but, but what I'm saying is that like, the Russians might've been dirt poor, but the Canadians seem to have lacked a bit of class in their skating, right? They lacked the flow, the lines, the skating skills, the extra artistry. They were the powerhouse team. They did have great lifts, but they were also packaged in a way where it was very commercial and there was like a lack of depth, but packaged brilliantly to maximize what they could do. I take issue with certain things in their program, like when they do their side-by-side -side triple toes and they both go airplane arms like this before they're setting. Like, they're just little things to me that look really uh, basic and lacking in polish. But as much as people want to say, yes, in the components, the Russians would get it now. When you're looking at things like GOE, you're like, well, that row shouldn't have gotten good GOE. Yes, like, on the technical elements, I, I don't, I, it was clear the Canadians had far better technical. lifts in the, the Canadian, in terms of their execution, they were a very strong lifting team. Their side-by-side -side jumps were not particularly strong, uh, the Canadians. And that's one where the Russians, especially on the side-by-side -tri triple toes, would get much higher components. Berge Nye and Secret Leads that never had a good twist, never had a good triple twist in all of their years together. So, um, you know, it's a really hard one to kind of suss out. Um, but also in, in a different judging system, I think that the lead going into the free skate would have been massive if yeah. I were judging. Yeah, that, that Russian- It didn't story. matter back then. Yeah. Woo, I know because of the ordinals, but like it truly Same like- Harry and Michelle. Michelle won that short program in Nagano by a million points. It doesn't matter, right? Right. Was, right. You so, know that if you actually add all of the five, eight and five, you know, the marks and you do it times, and you, you know, if you count the marks in the long twice in Nagano, Michelle's lead from the judges in the short program, it would have given her the gold because she, that lead in the short program would have been, it's a fun little exercise. Just add up oh, all, interesting. Okay. Double okay. the free, it's two thirds. The lead in the short was still that big. Yeah. It's just like an interesting little thing. But again, I think- Maybe I'm that nerdy and have done that because I was cool. <laughs> I <don't know>. like, <laughs> Wait, are you kidding? You are like preaching to the choir. I'm like, yeah, let's do it right now. Okay. I just think in general, the hyper analysis of the pairs event is almost moot because what was really going on is that the dance event was ridiculous at this time. You had Tor Valentin, then we had a Besmian of a Bukit situation, Klimov of a Ponomarenko kind of like veering into some pretty wild stuff. 
I know you love her. Grichuk was so not my thing. Like, dance Ever. right now. That program <laughs> in 98, Tracy was a hater, okay? Yeah, you send me know? next to Tracy. No. <laughs> you want to know what the real thing is? If you go back and watch, go back and watch 1990 Junior Worlds and CBS highlights. You watch Anisina with Averbuk, who was her original partner. Now, Marina seems like maybe a nightmare. He fell in love with Arena Lobachova. They split. Watch them. It's like Russian, in terms of like how expertly matched Tessa and Scott or Torval and Dean are, they were so incredible together. They looked like they were going to win two Olympic gold medals when you look right. at them together at the 1990 or 1992 Junior Worlds, which they won both of them. They were both so strong and they both got with partners who were not up to their level. And they right. and then they were against each other at those Olympics. Marina skating a really heartfelt um, performance to I Have a Dream. And, about freedom and equality. Interesting. It's like when Tanya skated to Much Ado About Nothing after her scandal. <laughs> and then you have, and they were all about the hair, that team, right? And Gwendell trying not to face plan on those twizzles when you watch in that program. Um, it was very eye-catching. That one day we will live together. As he's like, dra like no, it's you wish that was when it was. It was the Liberty Bell ringing, and so she's the ringing bell. I was yeah. like, oh, but this is what I'm telling Let you. You, watch, Let you watch that Paris event. You've got a good Russian team that skated a little tight. You've got a cheesy Canadian team that They're skated very, very clean. Now we go over to dance. I'm watching this weird MLK program that's odd, and I'm confused up against. Um, uh, Averbuch's outfits that he put through the shredder and now they're like hysterically moving around in sloppy ways to he harpsichord broken tragedy. music. And the last lift looks like the looks like tower two falling. Remember how she falls over his body? It's yeah, and it was clunky, it didn't even work. Judy Bloomberg and Michael Sieper did it better in the Scheherazade in 84. My point it is did. like this discipline looks like a joke at this point in time. And so they have to pull out stops because there's no rhyme or reason to who's good at this, in my opinion. And they fixed it. Dance, I love dance. I love vintage dance, like early 80s, like late 70s dance. And I really love dance. It's kind of that Marina, like 2010 on, it got its act together. I think dance needed the most reform and that's what caused all of this. So I was showing this to Debbie the other night and she was like, wait, she's Russian representing France? That's real fair. And I said, you just worked out with Kristen and Igor. Kristen from California and Igor from Russia who were representing Azerbaijan at the same competition, mom. And she's yeah. like, well, that's crap too. <laughs> <laughs> Again, for those that view it coming from an Olympic mentality, I'm coming at it from just a I love skating mentality. So it's like if you competing, if Elizabeth Tukdemishiva was skating for Uzbekistan right now and was able to go to the Olympics, it could really spice up that competition. I'm kind of interested because I just want to see the best ones. So it doesn't matter to me what country it comes from. But again, there was Fraser a big. Truly was the best. She was iconic. Okay, and you know what? Who was? Kristen and Igor, they were oh, yeah. iconic in 2002, all right? Marie Frost was there too, down in 12th or 11th or wherever she I was. was. There. Yeah. Yes, you yeah. see her with the background shots, yes. So. Yeah, I just, I think there, there's more to the dance, just, and I know all those ISU presidents, idiots and speed skaters as they may be, they knew ice dance was the thorn in their side because they were like, this is the ridiculous event that keeps mucking it, it all up. And they fixed it. In my opinion. Remember in 2001, this all happened because, okay, let's go back. Let's give a little history lesson. Okay. <laughs> in 99, Krilova and Ovsianikov, it was finally their moment to like reign supreme. They waited forever and people acted like they were really robbed against Grosha Kaplatov and Krilova knew how to cry. And, you know, remember in 98, she was like so upset all the time, right? against Grishuk and Grishuk like really was like the villainous, right? And we knew all of this stuff. It, when it was finally their time to be world champions, they had the worst material, right? Yeah. The Carmen, yeah, not, it was okay. The next year, they did an African tribal dance, right? And Marina and Gwendell did the, uh, 
that was the man in the iron mask, right? And that was when everyone thought that they deserved to win at the Worlds and Kulova won by a hair. I think it was a 5-4 split at the 99 Worlds. So Kulova then, the next season, had a back injury. They were both supposed to skate to Kamina Burana. We never got to see it in the matchup. They both, it was going to be like the Battle of the Carmens, all right? And then we didn't get to see it. And that same season is when Barbara Fusarpoli and her partner, who no one thought could skate, but everyone thought was attractive, came up with the Lord of the Dance or program, whatever that, or whatever they were skating to. And they, they moved to Tarasova. And all of a sudden they were just like moving on up and they were from Otavio's right. country. And everyone was like, Otavio is just as crooked as he had a very, um, untoward reputation as the head of the ISU. And perhaps if you were Italian, there was a boost there. And he was, um, they were moving up the ice dance ranks until the next season. And, and Asina and Pesera finally won uh, the Worlds at home in Nice in 2000. 2001, Worlds are in Canada. And this is when <laughs> Barfusa Poli and Margaglio could not lose a damn thing all season. And they had a program with a motorcycle crash in the middle of it where they like had a chest bump and they did one of the strangest Romeo and Juliet programs I have ever seen. It was with Tarasova. There was a heart. It was very dramatic. And I, I can understand why DDA felt the need to shore up the dance event, Jonathan, because I wouldn't trust those judges either. I'm, yeah. In, um, a, in, in a discipline where literally anything, listen to how we're describing the programs that are all like the, the medalists here. Like, but Barbara going into this Olympic season, so much less of a factor. Yeah, because she skated to I Will Survive. And she didn't. Okay. And he this fell. Season. okay, he fell with sets up the fall four years later when she does the stare. Right. I'm talking about Barish Nye and Sigur Lidza. In 98, 99, they were winning competitions, but they were really kind of burnt out after the Olympics. They had that horrible uh, soprano singing, whatever. They were wearing the pale green. They fell a lot and won a lot of competitions as the Chinese team was on the rise. But the Chinese team was getting to Mulan and everyone was like, hey girl that's like not world champion quality next season is in the fall when like Elena and Anton are like the Bobby and Whitney of skating by this point and they're barely speaking and he was in the bar fight over the summer and like broke right. his wrist and was off of training when they were training in Hackensack then they they lost to Jamie and David at Skate America in Canada oh oh I see Skate America they performed like utter dog shit. I mean, we, there's just no way. Then they had a short program at Skate Canada where they made three big errors, if not four, at least three big errors in the short program where they showed him ripping his costume off backstage. Then there was that fluff piece where like the fallen snowball where he's at practice and she's not and all of this stuff is happening. Then and by the way, they had like never done a clean long during all of these seasons. The cleanest long you ever see is like a crashy twist and an arm, a hand down on the throw. But they had the one, like a gorgeous program, The Sentimental Waltz. Um, probably my favorite of their free skates. Uh, and then they have a good skate at Europeans only to find out two weeks later that heck, she had taken Sudafed and failed um, the drug test like Andrea Radican which at the time was just like shocking and everyone just took that as, oh, a minor mistake. That happens, yeah. They weren't able to go to the Worlds. Everyone was very disappointed because they weren't able to skate at the Worlds and they were surely the best team. We never got to see them skate. Petrova and Tikhanov won. That was also the same Worlds where the French guy got stabbed in his hotel room. Remember that? Like, mm. and remember, these were the Worlds. This was when Jamie and David were on the rise and Jamie bombed at the Worlds in Nice and cried in the kiss and cry when they skated to Love Story. Next season, they win everything when Elena and Anton did the Chaplin program, which sure. they thought was brilliant, but yet they lost to the Canadians all the time. And this is when Jamie and David, they won all of their big titles in North America. Yeah, Kitchener won. was where the, right? Was where the Worlds was. I America. think they did win, technically they won the first Grand Prix final in Japan before Japan was like Japan in skating. Uh, and then they came back and they, they won the Worlds in, 
the worlds were in Vancouver, right? Oh, I thought it was in Kitchener, Waterloo. Kitchener, I think, yeah. was was where the um, the Grammy I thought that was Worlds in two thousand one. Two thousand one Worlds, they won. Okay. David, and then oh, they you're won. right. Of course, it's in Vancouver. Of course, I remember that because of Michelle, though. Okay, <laughs> and that's when Michelle's boot broke, and Danny had to fix mm -hmm. it. And it was too, yeah, okay. And then um, Dick wasn't at those Worlds; he had fallen, at, he uh, and hit his head on the ice different than when he got his head hit in Central Park, which, right? Um, Rambling around, yeah. Yeah, yes. And um, yeah, th so we're just like giving so many history lessons for people who don't have <laughs> <laughs> history of skating. Um, at this point in time, and we have, this is when um, Jamie and David were gonna skate to Rachmaninoff Piano Concerto number two, and they are, um, you know, it's supposed to be an orchid and Jamie's in an orchid colored dress and the flower is supposed to bloom. And it was like way too highbrow for this Canadian team. They use, they go back to love story in front of a home crowd. It gets sixes. It's like Canadian cheese all the way. And it was almost like the judges backed them into a corner of, of course, they should skate to this love story program at the Olympics and get all the sixes. It's also when like, remember she messed up at the nationals and he like, didn't grab her hand and then he right. was right she mm -hmm. imploded and actually that part of the documentary i really appreciate it when mm -hmm. they were like the stress was getting so real and it finally took david just one day breaking down like ugly crying for them to finally admit like this is really hard and we're really stressed right can we just own that we're in this together and it's really hard and they were able to sort of move forward that was a fascinating psychological thing made me think a little bit of kmt and michael like I, when it's all kind of about to spin out of control and you have pressure how do you just finally like break that mm -hmm. kind, kind of if you've ever been in an argument with someone and then somehow it, you just start laughing because mm -hmm. you're like okay this intensity let's just break through this and, and and get somewhere with it that part was amazing to me yeah and they also left Richard the year before the Olympics just like um Megan and Eric did mm. interesting so yes just like little back <laughs> now really this is all why Canada is pissed is Canada was so mad over the Nagano Olympics because of the brazen block. Born and crap situation, right? Which it was just never a fair event from the beginning of time, <laughs> which how- Did you think they should have had the bronze there over the French? It's incidental when you look at, to me, it's incidental. At the time I was, I was 12 and 11 and, you know, buying everything that Tracy Wilson was telling me, okay? Like, I know, yeah. I remember being like so offended on Tracy's behalf and Sandra saying, cause you know, DDA had told her it's already set. We know the order, one, two, three, four, Francis three. And he was right. But I remember judging and I was like, this didn't seem as offensive. Well, we had a little different, remember Kushik and Plattov were sloppy that you're, I think when they're in the compulsory dance, when they make the error, when she puts her foot down and they still put them first, like, it's just the whole event, at that point, the whole event is so tardish and so ridiculous that how do you move forward? You dismiss the discipline, quite frankly. Right. Yeah, you're like, I what are these the, results? I think that whole event in Nagano was so tainted and none of those people were disciplined for any of it. You know, no. they were in trouble. And then we see the same, you know, federations at the 99 Worlds, remember the pairs, um, with the toe tapping of the judges from Russia and Ukraine. And the only reason they got in trouble because at this point, Russia is getting more and more powerful in the ISU and Otavio overlooks it because he likes to stay in power and he likes to get his agenda done. He loved being ISU president and the Russians really had organized within the ISU at this point in time. And they were never getting disciplined for anything. Um, you know who the assistant referee was on um, the Paris event here in 2002? Uh, Andrew Lekernick. Oh, yes. Mr. Mm -hmm. Lekernick, who um, has been the referee many events. Mr. Lekernick, the highest ranking official in the ISU uh, right now, Alexander Lekernick. Uh, uh, excuse me. We're more friendly. No, I'm. <laughs> uh, and um, yeah, so in 99, this had happened. So there were two scandals right in a row that were coming into this and people were really pissed. And the Canadians felt like Russia and DDA were doing this again. And of course yeah. it was Allah involved in the dance and Yuri Balkov. With that same weave, yeah. 
Now, my favorite performances here. Jean Senft, uh, mother of Lauren Senft, uh, who was the judge that worked for a detective agency who had a pen and she had an extra pen and she recorded these MFers. Legend. Only, only, only to be punished for doing so. Because this is one of those old organizations that's like, now we have to punish the person, but we're going to also punish the person who now is making it messy. Which yeah. is just like the ISU and just how anyone that was involved in the World Skating Federation, they uh, right. just landed and got in, in trouble. So, and they got rid of some really great people involved in the sport. So, uh, and, and everyone just overlooks it. It's like, oh, well, they shouldn't have done that. I guess more Olympic assignments for me. Yeah, like, more Olympic assignments for the people that were caught cheating at the last Olympics. No, but I even mean like if you were in the U.S., right, and you look at the people that really got involved in the World Skating Federation, who really went overboard, they all got banned. And you could be someone else who kind of played neutral, and they were like, oh, maybe I was supportive of the World Skating Federation and supportive of the ISU and the USFS, but I didn't get too involved. Those are the kind of people that rise to the top. Right. That's just those reality. that stand. Those that stand for nothing but just kind of waffle between. <laughs> it's it's unfortunate. Several of them are Olympic. I thought, se no. and several of them I got. Thought, look, the USFS uh, president, I think, was getting elected to the ISU board, which is how they were not, uh, or the ISU council was called. You know, that's how they were, didn't take a big of a stand. And then when the IJS was implemented, they didn't go, uh, you know, very hard against it. So you have to look, look at all of this stuff that was happening. I remember right. Sonia Brunchetti's son is on the other side, even though Sonia is so for truth and he was considered perhaps on the Otavio side of history. He was involved in the 2002 Worlds. Um, mm. um, yes, because you know how when Glee Chait and Sergei Sevnoski, this is a fact, when they, got the bronze medal in 2002 at the Worlds, all of the skaters felt super empowered after what happened with Sally and Peltier. And they were like, they all claimed that Galit's father bought her a world medal in 2002. And there are different articles about this, if you Google it. And the skaters all signed a petition to give the bronze medal to Drobiaska and Vonnegas who were definitely um, the favorites among the skaters and many of the fans at the time. And had been and been winning medals all that season. I love when Galit Chait went to Montclair. I was like, oh, Igor, did you sign that petition when you were a skater? <laughs> I just wanted to It was to like know. the original, like, change.org or whatever it yes. is. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Fascinating. It was a nutty time. It was a nutty time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm trying to think of anything new sort of surface. I was glad they talked they talked about ice dance a bit more. In Let me this tell you, I think Galit knows everyone who signed that petition, and if she doesn't, her father sure does. Okay, I would I would remember that. Yeah, and of course, nothing happened. I mean, I think that don't you think that's why the ISU didn't want to do something with the medals? One, they admitted something went wrong, and two, they're like, great, now everyone's going to be asking for another medal. Of course. And then bam, right out the gate with Jake. Yeah, <laughs> there it is, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Messy sport, messy dish. Indeed. You know we, we love the mess. Okay, it's, how but about when people, like, what I find interesting is that, yes, maybe people did get turned off to skating because they were like, it's so crooked. But I was like, wait a second, the US public, was fine with a competitor allegedly having her competitor physically right. harmed. That was entertainment, but bad judging, that was distasteful, we're done. Like, you're yeah. like, what? what? Like, yeah, 100%. The, the general public will eat whatever you feed it. You know, and it's so interesting the way Elena said, you know, in the end, USA won. USA wins. And I was like, well, the medal was, but I don't think it did win because I think at the end of the day, skating in North America, especially in the US, and then ultimately in Canada, as we see with Stars and Ice and things, it took a huge dive. And it was like, yeah. we needed that Olympic boost at that point, post 2002, to influx in different things. And everything just start, went wrong, one thing after another. 
Remember all those dissing shows that were on TV? Tara Lipinski, hip hop on, I mean, everything got so cheap and so it was saturated. But I mean, that was an Olympics, like the US got three singles medals. I know the lady, the ladies event wasn't in the order in which we had hoped those medals arrived, but it happened like it was still, we still got three medals, but yet already the writing was on the wall that it was about to die here. Yeah. It was, yeah, it really pushed it forward. I think it didn't help, even though that a scandal was great in terms of interest and rating in the short term. I think the fact, if you look at the clips of everyone on TV and it's just wall to wall coverage of skating being rotten and crooked, that I think is really bad. And then I think Michelle losing just didn't help. Even though there was a new comer that won and you could be happy for her, this was this like icon and fate. It just was like, not the- Not the moment. Not the moment, right? Yeah. And listen, do you think that maybe Michelle was gonna win at home, even though Irina had been getting the pull in Europe when they were gonna win there. You saw that triple flip in the short program, Jonathan, so did I, right. okay? Right. Remember right. when all of a sudden Michelle was first and she was like, oh, right? Jonathan, do you think yeah. that the US might have made sure that Michelle would have medaled uh, in the, in, it would have won if it were at all possible? Yeah, yeah. If, if at that crossroads, if two people skated well enough and it's like, which one? Yes, let's push for her. But and I don't she, think that the US was as brazen or as good as perhaps France. As, or I don't think we're good at it. I know Russia will always talk about that, especially in that era, the power of the US Federation because of Michelle and things like that. But I got news for you. I don't think we're good at it at all. Do you know when the US and Canada got better at politics? When they had Marina and Igor to <laughs> get it done. <laughs> Igor who helped now get Raphael. It. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Igor, who got Diana Davis to the Olympics, and Marina, who almost got Daisuke to the Olympics, who can't even lift his partner. I mean, these are masters, okay? <laughs> Marina stole Gordy Van Grink off from Stanislav Zhuk. And come on, these are uh, yeah. people that are playing checkers, okay? Right. right. And like, does the KGB like train Russian coaches in being like better at like psychological warfare because they're all just so much better at it? Or do they become masters of it when they're climbing that system? Like what came mm. first, the chicken or the egg? Mm. I'm sorry. If you talked, if Moskvina, Marina Zueva, Igor Spielbond, Raphael, um, <laughs> Galina, they can all spin things so freaking well. You're like, oh, my God. You ever see when Orser tries to give like an interview like that, or he's trying to like talk about Han, you, you could like see that he's acting. You can see that he's trying to give a certain answer and trying to play that role. He doesn't have the same skill set that um, the others Which have. Which is probably better for his person, I'm gonna say. <laughs> I hey, think- I think for Moscovina to have the liberties she had coming up at the time she did, I, the, as a woman to have gained so much power so early on, like, she's crafty. She's, she's freaking crafty. brilliant, okay? But she's here's, here's why I don't mind it a little bit, because I believe she loves figure skating. Yes! Because I believe she is doing it and believes most of it. I you really like think it? she- we're okay with it? Because she's charming as hell and we like the product that she puts out. Yeah, but like a DDA doesn't give two shits about figure skating, in my opinion. He cares about power and winning. And the same with some of these, obviously, Chinquanta doesn't care at all about figure skating. I think Moskvina loves it to her core. And that real passion at least yielded some, some very interesting results, even if she was finagling to make so, make, make sure that it happened. But she finagled so well, you felt good about it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because I felt like she believed it was for the good of skating. She's the person that could fire you from your job and tell you that it's a good opportunity for you. But she, I, again, I think she might think that actually, if she said it. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's something which is so interesting. She also told us that Oleg Shlyakov was, no, was pretty soon no longer going to be abusive. You know, remember? Yeah, uh, all you need is a good coach, a, a nice, strong female authority figure. I'm sure that just got, I mean, here's the thing that was interesting about the documentary. 
was the, we all hear about the sliced situation. We read in the second mark that Oleg was such a, an asshole, but in this moment, and I was glad to see Scott soften a little bit, we're watching like a legit survivor, not a survivor because she couldn't walk. Like this is a child who was physically abused and tormented by this horrible man forever while everyone sat by. She sat there without flinching an eye and was like, yeah, no one did anything because it was our job to figure it out. The other thing that's always a little weird to me is yes, he was abusive. And yes, she had a skate through her head. But they've almost connected those two things in the yes. telling. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It was as almost he, if he like did it on purpose, which you're like, okay, these are two independent things. Yes, he was abusive as all get out. And it's terrible to hear the recollections of him kicking her with his skates on and all this sort of yeah. whacking and it's terrible. Right. There's a lot of other stuff there. There's also stuff in the past of Sally Ann Peltier that aren't so like, you know, rosy in, in their partnerships, but they don't focus on that. <laughs> yeah. But I just I just think of like, when we talk about- Not on that level, not on the level of, you know, Lynn and Children Andy, right? and what are we doing to them in this sport at times? We'll get into Russian juniors in a second. But remember but like, like, when Dubay and Davison had their horrible action, because we didn't, you know, there was not a history of abuse. No one said that he did that on purpose, you know, or- you know that that happened that's what that's what i'm trying to say is that you know yeah. there have been these accidents in pairs we do yeah. see that these things do happen you know but yeah. in every retelling of the elena and anton uh, the, the elena and oleg situation you really you start to think like yeah he was a well, he kicked her in the head and then she couldn't uh, you know, and, they're looking for the people on the couch to be like i bet he did it on purpose like that's that's clear what they're trying to to narrate Look in the YouTube comments. People are gonna be like, yeah, we know that Elena got kicked in the head. You know, like sure. that's how it's all happened. Yeah, Listen, yeah. I love her. She was ferocious and she made a good point. Like, well, why would we go ask for help? We were a good pair. We didn't need it. And it's like, yeah, in their minds, they didn't need it. You know, like, I don't think that the skaters have any idea what's going on. And people, you know- She comes you, across great in these interviews. It's the she's same way how she's people told. treat Sotnikova. And listen, what they, they can't even mention her without acting like she cheated at the Olympics somehow in, in the judging uh, of 2014, right? She obviously wasn't involved in that, okay? No. You know who no. was? Ala, the, the wife of Valentin Pesce, <laughs> okay? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So. And again, this was a different scenario. Um, Berejnaya was winning most of her events. Mm -hmm. uh, also, like, she, this There's was a real a factor. It wasn't a, out of nowhere like Sotnikova was, yeah. There's a great uh, Ala story. If you go back, uh, I did a video, uh, Tears on Ice. It's a great story about Ala at the 94 uh, Russian nationals in ice dance. You know, just her, where she threatened the judges in Russia to vote a certain way. And this was when Krylova was competing against Ovsyanikov. So it's just mm -hmm. all the different power players. Um, yeah. And Ovsyanikov was um, skating with, one of Tiffany Zahorsky and Jonathan Guerrero's coaches, the daughter of that uh, situation. And that's how this all played out. So anyway, it's just all fascinating, okay? These are just things that happen in the sport. And I think a way of life, especially at that time in Russian figure skating under that- rule. Especially for dance, because it seemed like you could make any choice you wanted, so they had to make sure. Now, I mean, although we're gonna talk about that Oleg Vasiliev article, which I thought was really good. He's like, well, now IGS has become just as obsolete as 6.0, because by well, now everyone's figured out how to manipulate it. Of course. And, what, you and once you figure it out, out, now it's time to replace it. So that people take the that bothered me at the end of this documentary when David Peltier acts like, you know, skating got fixed because of what happened to him. I'm like, please. And I hate when the Canadians pretended to be so on board with the IJS. Why? Because they got hella political in Skate Canada as, and they used shutting their mouths and getting behind the IJS as part of that thing. When yeah. all of a sudden Canada started meddling in every discipline in 2008 and you're like, how did they all of a sudden become a very powerful federation? <laughs> like right. oh, how times have changed, right? <laughs> Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. I have to say, I loved it. I, I thought it was well shot. I thought the who, interviews- Who gave your best excellent. performances? Best performances. 
Sandra is always a jewel. And especially because that paint color behind her, I mean, I know that's not her place, but it's the same color as my den. Uh, but also- studio, By the way, that was not her actual house. Right? Yeah, it and was- she said Tara was extremely hands-on. She said Tara was- Oh, like, good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and Sandra is a TV guru. I mean, she's gonna, she's gonna have high standards, but I thought even like, Jamie's wall covering in the back. It was aesthetically very pleasing. It was very well shot. I thought all of the locations were great. And I love, and this is something I didn't know till I was in these like kinds of like filming scenarios. If you show them a personality, they're gonna try to, to find an off interview moment to let that personality come through. Like on the Food Network and HGTV and stuff, like some of the stuff they were using was my off the cuff stuff that wasn't in the formal interview. And they were doing that here with Tamara. How endearing is Tamara when she's like, are we finished? Great, you all want a glass of wine or something? And you're like, that lady seems fun. Same thing with that mobster and she, guy. And she would kick your ass, right? Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> I would drink with Tamara Mosfina. I'd say I drink her under the so, table, but she's already standing underneath it. <laughs> she'll tell you about the mafia. It's like, wait a second. There was money. There was money to be had in skating. And not <laughs> at, at certain people at that point. But, uh, but to her point, she was like, well, she was but instigating. Not in that sense. Why, why would a mobster care? Sex? Something, something weird is going on. Like there was some sort of like. Well, there's also a there's also a huge nationalism with the Olympics going on. And the fact that how many times have we heard about the dynasty of this pairs from the Bolshoi Ballet and the tradition and it's 40 years of this and all, listen, for different countries yeah. is, sports are tied into their identity in a different way, in machines and in terms of Yes, it can set up your life to win a gold medal in certain ways. And I think why would the mob care? There's different things there, I think. But it's something romantic, what is the something- What is the yeah. relationship between Marina Anisina and, um, and the mobster? And why does he know her father? And what, you know, what- Well, he what, claimed they knew each other from hockey, but remember in those well, FBI calls- hockey, right? They keep talking about Marina's mom also yes. like so who knows what the mom connection was who knows about all of it but they let the producers wanted us to see what a blowhard this guy was when he kept like yelling at the camera crew are they ready he's sick of waiting and then he starts yelling at some person who's walking in the background him? that's what i want to yeah. know how did they get him? i know how they must have paid and how did they get marie renee's trust to um do it oh i hope yeah. that oil money Oh, that Lipinski oil money that Christine would write about. Christine Brennan, right. that, those shady right. books that she would write. Uh, <laughs> remember when but, I mean, she came she came across so elegant, Marie in Strasbourg, no less. Like that is like the city of cities. I was like, well, you better be happy just sitting there in Strasbourg, Marie, of doing your healing regular, like doing yoga. Oh my God, Jonathan, do you believe she's convinced herself that she doesn't remember what happened in that judges meeting? I mean, she is the kind of kooky person that, like, we've met her before. I've met, I've met yeah. Marie before. We know the type. We know the type. She would yeah. be like a chore if she were a choreographer. She would be like Lorna Brown. She would have skated with John Curry <laughs> and Robin Cousins, and like, she's just that kind of eclectic. You know, she's like but, uh, a yeah. yoga teacher. You ever meet a yoga I, teacher where you're like, honey? What is your backstory? <laughs> you know, you have one, hence, hence probably why you were drawn to this sort of healing work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't believe for a minute she doesn't <laughs> remember. But light in me sees and honors the light in you. Okay. <laughs> yes. Is that, a, right. is that a Tina Turner quote? <laughs> mm. <laughs> Amazing. I have to say, I was glad you had me watch this. Mm. I was glad you had me watch it. Next, um, you can it, watch here, Jonathan, and we can have- Yeah, I was going to bring it up because I was like, you know I'm not watching that. But the-, the Why? This was like you're wonderful... above it? Wait a second. You think you're above cheer? No, I don't. I'm not. I'm just not interested in it. No. Until you see these girls getting concussions and you see their backstories, you don't even know. You don't even know. Okay. No, and I'm fine with not knowing. <laughs> Amazing. You are missing out. Okay. <laughs> It is wild, okay? <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> I'll take you at your word, Dave. This was, uh, so top performances for me, Marie Renee. 
Okay, Jonathan, I- With all that here. Listen, I think we bring all these band judges back. Sally Stapleford, Marie, as long as they have to give interviews about how they judge things at the end of every competition. I think we have a press conference with the judges where Christine Brennan um, and Phil Hirsch can go with the microphone from person to person. And right. I'll, I'll hold the microphone, okay? Yes, <laughs> Marie, Marie how, how would you have judged Nikita and Victoria against um, Gabby and Guillaume? Uh, yeah. Marie, how do you feel about um, Hubble and Donahue? Okay, this is what I want to know. This is what Can I want to know. Can you lay hands on them to ensure their energy allows them to skate cleanly? Yeah. I'm sorry. You think she did anything worse than a lot than Allah? Why is Allah allowed to judge? Why is right. Yuri Belkov allowed to judge? How many things did Lekernik let get by him on his watch as a good referee? Okay, I don't know. Well, that's, yeah, it, it's ridiculous. I'll spin that on that tail. Okay. Yes. All right. I was surprised there was so much Underhill and Martini. Well, they were the commentators for Canadian. I know, but like, what? Again, the fact. I will say how you hear something live does play in. So the fact that everyone watched this with the TV commentators and like the throw chip a loop and the gold is theirs. I mean, it was a great television moment. Right. But it does forever shape how you view it. So the FBI guy who knows nothing in skating and he's like, well, even I knew they were better, but he's also responding to the commentator. Yeah, too. you're not making a good argument that the people who don't know anything- well, It's not think. nuanced, but it's, it's a commentator yeah. in, in a US arena with a response from a North American crowd. I mean, Moscovina has a point when she says things, well, it was a Western crowd, right? So- It 100% was, who may go for Broadway over Lincoln Center. All the North Americans like Moulin Rouge over the Beethoven for ice dance and, but I'm serious, we, we like, and they talked about this in the in the series and it made me think of- the Mike has a word would have won under any panel unless Didier was involved, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but it's a more presentational includes the audience as opposed Remember, to- Remember, I told you all, the day after 2017 Worlds when Didier posted on Facebook that he didn't like those ice dance results, of the tw- I said, you just watch. And all of a sudden the next season, the results were like magically different. I'm just saying that maybe things were a little crooked in ice dance before um, the Olympics in 2018. Allegedly, rumor has, I don't know, momentum all of a sudden shifted on a dime. I remember pointing it out. I said, Scott Moyer, like stumbled in that free dance. DDA was pissed. You all just watch next fall. And what happened, Jonathan? That. Yeah. Okay, this is just, it's the way the sport works, okay? Suddenly people saw things very differently, okay? But I'll also remember in 1994 when um, uh, Gordieva and Greenkopf did their program. In the original commentary, Scott is picking up on the criticisms like uh, Sergei popped the sow and like there were a couple of other minor errors, but then when they do the highlight video, or now all of the publications that come out of that video afterwards, they omit all of the criticism. They, they take out that commentary, especially about the double sow issue. Um, because again, the, the, part the of public, Marx if they don't know, it. they rely on the comment. Hmm. Do I remember what? Did you read my, Ser- my survey? Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> remember the part in there that Katya says that they debated whether they should give a gift to the Federation before the Olympics? Oh. Oh, These are just like little details that. that you put in there that you're like, whoa! Like a like a point set up. <laughs> are you eating pineapple? Yeah. Nice ananas. That's a nice touch. Yeah. You know, listen, it's, it's a nice evening. We're having a nice evening. To talk about medley. Yeah, like keeping it juicy. Yeah, both in fruit and in content. This is great. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> great. No. Why am I eating? I don't know. Okay. Anyway, I digress. Moving along. It wasn't meant to be a criticism, Jay. It was not. It's it's a natural de-swellant. So you're really helping yourself. Well, I hope so. Yeah. Every skater wants to be (laughs) de-swelled. Less (laughs) swelled, yeah. (laughs) Okay. Speaking of de-swelled, help. Oh, wait. So, Sandra, I thought Peltier came across better than um, Sally. She really doesn't come off well. It does come across as bitter grapes a lot of times. Um, and it's he so was kind of had like a no-nonsense. And man, did he get more handsome with age. I was so- 
she comes across as someone who doesn't have an education, okay? Like at all, okay? Yeah. But has a lot of confidence. Yeah, envious, yeah. Um, I think she's authentically herself, but I can, you can see why it's a tough watch for certain people. She's a yeah. great interview because she's completely authentic. Right. But remember when she was like, really hated Johnny Weir at any point to talk about him. There's just things about that situation that- <laughs> Are problematic. Yeah, 100%. Um, yeah. I think David comes across funny, perhaps not driven as, a, as an athlete of that nature. Um, yeah, and not warm and fuzzy, but somewhat level-headed. Anton, a good bullshit artist who learned from Moscovina. He did, loves- Did you recognize him at first? Well, we had just seen him watching at Russian Nationals in the stands, so yes. But, I mean, that was a, I did not expect that from him. Also, um, Elena actually says in Russian, she called the Canadians two nightstands skating together, which also has like a bit of a body shaming reference to them. Like, yes. Oh, I Legend. thought you meant just as in doll. Oh, I see. Oh, no. okay. Like, okay. No, okay. short and squat. Um, and um, Elena was looking fabulous. I loved her interviews. Yeah. Loved them. I loved him in the last one too. She, she again is just, she's being very authentic and unapologetic, but, but, but rational. Yeah. He, I loved when they showed, the best part was when they showed that he uh, would, that Anton wouldn't give his post uh, interview after, um, the free skate and you see that woman who like looks so terrified did you see her she's like my boss is gonna yell at me <laughs> like, yes. that's all i saw yeah and i also love the moment when david hears uh at the crowd the five seven no the double axle the, when they're sitting the smile he kind of yes. gives a smirk to her yeah amazing and i do believe that that was the turning point in what settled their entire nervous system Yep. When they went out, they just seemed calm and collected. And I think it was because of that smirk and the 5-7. And all the drama with, you know, the collision and the warm up, And then, of course, the agent is like, oh, well, uh, you know, it was on purpose. And then, but remember that agent who didn't know skating, I believe, if you go back and read, I think he messed up deals for Sally and Peltier, where he tried to ask for too much money for the post-Olympic tours. There was something that happened in the spring of 2002 for them. They didn't cash in as much as... They could have if you revisit yeah. it. So yeah. anyway, just a fascinating thing. And then they they wound up doing like a rematch between the two pairs, but they waited like far too long and no one freaking cared. They should have had them reskate for like big money, like on NBC <laughs> and done it like, you know, six weeks after the Olympics or something and made it very exciting. So, yeah. You know, yeah. that would have been better. Uh, Everyone think, has a price. <laughs> you could have right. swung it, yeah. Listen, Nancy sat down with Tanya in 1998 for the right price. Okay. Yeah, for real. <laughs> and James Brown did a very um, gripping interview. Okay. We watched, I watched it and I heard- yeah, Of course you did. Yeah, exactly. But Tanya, she skated outside because none of those ladies would touch her. And she skated outside doing her, two, her 1992 artistic masterpiece outside. And it was- Is that the one Rosalind Sumners is commentating? Yes, and she's like, she's I don't like, wish her success. I don't wish her- It was so weird. She just should have been quiet. I freaking <laughs> love Roz, okay? You know why I love- they Ro kept baiting her. They were like, what do you feel? She's like, I don't feel compassion, but I feel like she's skating. I hope she's having fun or whatever. <laughs> One of my favorite interviewees ever. I just yeah. I didn't love Roz. Okay. I just, I love to watch all of her numbers. Beautiful Goodbye being my favorite. Okay. Okay. Just okay. Black Anything Velvet. With the on pair waist. Yeah. <laughs> and Amazing Grace on the pan flute. Like, oh my God, watching her pop every freaking jump in 1984. Oh my God, I just, I freaking love her. Okay, I love how neurotic she is. I love that she still couldn't do that flying camel and that's why she decided to quit skating because she was too old to be working on a flying camel. Okay. <laughs> Anytime. You know at the time, don't you think, who would you have been? But I think I probably would have been an Elaine guy if I were as a fan then. 
Elaine's the pride of Paramus, New Jersey. I mean, come right? On. So you got to go Elaine. Yeah. <laughs> she was missing half a foot. I mean, come on. Right, <laughs> right. Dear Lord. <laughs> Give that woman a bronze medal. Loved Rosalind. Okay. And that Tiffany. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, yeah. it was a great oh, Yeah. Time. I would have had a lot of tears over Tiffany. That's for sure. Yes. yes. All right. And then we had Katarina, who was not yet as fabulous in 84, but a very good companion. No, because I know I was Team Debbie from day one. Oh. Well. Day one. Yes. A Unitar disco program? <laughs> I oh. am in. Best short program ever. Until oh. Center Man. <laughs> <laughs> Katarina looked like one of the call telecharge now girls, okay, with the feathers. <laughs> that's where I'm in. All right, I used to love that. The, fe the feathers that they had to add on the thighs, remember, because she was just leotarding it at Euro. I call telecharge now, okay. <laughs> Amazing. 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 All right, let's talk about the Russian juniors. Um, another fun event. Um, so, um, what discipline do you want to leave with? Well, okay, this is what I think. We can go light on the men because frankly, they were God awful. And they're not even picking the junior world team now off of this event because the men were so awful. And um, interestingly enough, the guy who won third in the short program, fourth in the long program, and he's our winner. So, so the, the, there were two uh, male skaters that interested me. Well, mm -hmm. one interested me and one less so. But so there was Nikolai, Kuznetsov, right? He's been in Team Two Parisa for a while. We've watched him uh, for several years. For some of us who've watched the advanced novice competitions, he can, he's uh, I think one year older than my son Arseny Fedotov. Uh, <laughs> you know, I love uh, to watch skate. He was on Ice Age. Kolya Kolesnikov skating, uh, skating to meditation from Tice had a gorgeous free skate. Yes, and so it was interesting that. Coming in 10th from the short program, it was really just sort of a botched spin was all it took to, to sort of bury him that much in the short. But I thought his extension was lovely, had a couple of quads, but I was gonna ask you because they are giving him the full blown ladies formula in terms of uh, programming, sort of extension, these kinds of things. And I just wonder, now when we can you can't say ladies formula sports rue is going to take that and say that you're calling him a woman okay no you know, excuse oh, me wait okay then uh, thank you for that because allow me to they are so that. homophobic and misogynistic in this country you have to be very <laughs> careful okay that the formula they are using for the programs that has found success among their lady competitors <laughs> i see the same choreographic strategies being used here i also wonder if any of these quads will last as opposed to know. the much less pleasing to watch, but Maxine, uh, Maxine Belyovsky, who was dead last and did like nothing in the short program, was missing spins, was missing step sequences, was missing jumps, all this sort of stuff. He was second in the free skate here. A lot of quads, no style, no program, but his were the kinds of quads that had enough air to them that I was like, I bet I will see you in the senior ranks and you will still have these squads. I didn't know if I could say the same about Nikolai. So uh, Terry has not had success with boys. Um, they particularly, they've gotten a lot of back injuries as they've grown over time and they disappear. And they're often very slight and tiny like the girls are, but we never see them when they get full grown. And it's, Listen, she says it's because men are weaker. You know, Mishin didn't seem to have that problem with men. Right. Um, you know, it doesn't seem to be a problem for Nathan Chen or Yuzuru Hanyu, but for some reason, the Atari formula has not worked um, with men. Uh, and we've seen many talented boys who, as soon as they start to grow uh, and have their growth spurts, tons of injuries, and we never see them again. Remember uh, Simsonov? Um, Pitkaev, who was like my original yeah, heartbreak. Like, what happened? Uh, yeah. like, all the, you know, yeah. so many, and, and they usually disappear with, you know, not much fanfare because no one pays attention. <laughs> it's like, wait, what happened yeah. to them, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, he does have some lovely qualities. Um, I just I hope we don't lose them. He doesn't have a triple axle. Interesting, because he did a double axle here. It looked less wrenching than some of the female skaters when they're trying to do uh, the jumps. But again, um, we got two, qu two quad toes and a quad sow, but no triple axle. And we got a nice triple lutz, triple toe, and then a triple lutz with a really scary fall. Uh, that splat was upsetting, yeah. I thought, I was happy that they picked a great classical piece for him, Meditation from Tice. I thought it actually suited him. I just thought that the choreography was really uninspired and often vacant, although he has lovely 
toe point, um, an extension. Yeah, the extension was really lovely. That's good, a good uh, presentation in general, but I just thought that the actual material was really boring, it was really formulaic and uninspired. It was as though the choreographer makes dozens of programs a year in some sort of assembly line and just puts um, the minimal work into it. That's funny. That's though. what I think. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh, this program. I watched several of this program and the discipline right before this from the same people. Yeah. Um, I thought that Ilya Yablokov, who won, looked like an adult man. And I that thought- That was struggling. Well, yes. I mean, yeah. he struggled, but they looked like real adult jumps. And it looked like he is yeah. already throat spurt. And I could see him transitioning into um, the senior ranks quite easily. So- I, I'm not saying he's going to be the most successful. He looks as much of a hot mess as the other uh, Russian team <laughs> besides Skate Canada. Uh, but yet, I think um, he'll fit in rather nicely. And okay. <laughs> more of the same. But I wanted to talk to you really about the Ice Dance event because we talked about this a little bit yesterday. And every time I see it, I'm more and more convinced. And I feel like there are so many... U.S. dance fans that just love the dance and they love ice dance and the skaters and they love that champion Charlie White is now a coach and they love that all these people are involved. And Jonathan, do you know what my gut says? What? The U.S. ice dance is about to fall off of a cliff. Yeah. And because when I look at the next couple of years, these I see juniors so in Russia have depth. They these have depth. top four teams. Mm -hmm. And so do like uh, Diana Davis and Gleb Smokin and Annabelle Morozov and Andre Bogan and Elizabeth Ahuvadieva and right and her partner and you, you start to be and you know is Bukin going to stay around another year or two and you're like oh my goodness they have the kind of depth in ice dance coming that's like singles like the ladies depth and you're like oh wow but this because is why this federation is fascinating because when they dipped right? Mm -hmm. This sort of uh, Marina, North American, now Marie France kind of takeover. They dipped and went right down to the juniors to develop. They gave up almost. They didn't because, you know, there's a big push for Vicky and Nikki and Buchan's doing fine, but they put her. all their effort into way, way younger. And now suddenly we're seeing all those benefits of that focus, that they are now in droves, this generation. Hello, welcome back. Nikolai Morozov teamed up with Alexei Gorshkov and, you know, he, not just Annabelle and Andre, he coached uh, the winners here, uh, Arena. Lucan's coach had a couple of people here. Yeah. Oh, yes. so these, these are some real depth coming. And I think in the US, there are a lot of talented skaters that were in that second group at nationals, but they all seem to be with like the wrong partner. And ever since Avon Lee and Vadim split up, it's like, wait a second who is coming up and like Panamaranko's injured and had a rough season. And you're like Green and Parsons and she's getting taller compared to him. And you're like, wait a second, all of a sudden, like is Jeffrey Chen like with, you know, are they this good? They're good. Are they this level good? Is are they this good as a team? I believe yeah. the potential in our skaters is there, but as we just watched in that documentary, both people had to cycle through some partners before they found the ones that they all said magically matched the minute they tried it. There was this, remember, Ty was on this for a long time that the problem with American pairs is nobody stays together. But of course you have to be with the right person in order to stay together. And I don't know that that's happening here. Yeah. Well, Ty had a coach in John Nix who was experienced and often was very successful putting two people together. Now, Jojo and Ty were actually kind of taller, but they worked through it, right? And they and it's, it worked with the rules. But over time, you know, certain coaches pair people together. How Alexa and Brandon were paired together and they were a good match from the start, at least athletically, right? They don't have a lot of uh, emotion with one another, but they were a good physical match from the start and therefore they could move forward. We often just don't even have the right people together in North America. Right. Like, is Evelyn the ideal partner for Trent? Probably not, right? Right. Uh, right. He's short for a partner. And you look at just different partnerships where you're like, you know, KMT and Michael Marinaro were never really 
a great match from the start. And but look at a team that was matched well, Velocijar and Trankov, and they took off like a rocket with good matches. Once they changed, yeah, exactly. So you look at this and you're like, this is a huge part of the equation, putting the right people together. And I have to tell you, I think the Russians are so much better match. And I think that people are so used to having so many strong North American teams. I'm sorry, I don't think that the um, the Rio program can compete. It's charming. Yeah, it's which charming. is charming and showing and creative. Yeah. But then you see what's coming up here. And it is just a little bit more edge, a little more I don't know. There's there's something really exciting. Have I enjoyed this this discipline immensely, much more than all of the other three? Quite frankly, I do think. I do think. Listen, there are a lot of North American fans who will get turned off to the Russians winning another discipline. Yes, and that will happen a lot around the world too. People will be like, "Wait, they're winning every f discipline except for the men." Yep. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Get ready. Get yeah. ready. Um, it's it's coming, and I think yeah. maybe not next year. Like maybe one of the teams will stick around, and Piper and Paul will go for a gold. But they can take out Canadians for the gold medal. Let me tell you. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, They've done it before. <laughs> it's coming. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. politically, every and the ISU has let it happen. And you know what? Now they're they've got more funding and more organization and they just, they don't care. They would, people have talked about Nina Mosier, Elton John, splitting people up and repairing them on a practice session, being like, this is a waste of time. You skate with them. This is, and Hello, oh. China. Yes. Okay. Partner swap it. Let's just get it right. Yeah. I just try to do that in the U.S. It would be right. insanity. Right. Well, and a lot of people have pointed to, of course, you're now dealing with potentially four parents. Mm -hmm. it, in any switch, you know, I mean, it, it becomes so, so complex. So the winners here were Irina and Dario. So mm -hmm. this, when they did their free dance, what I get from them that I don't necessarily get from the North American aesthetic is fire. Mm -hmm. They are going lightning fast. They have energy in all of their limbs. Like it was, even in the slow sections, it's so intense. They're and strong so, haters. Yes. Instead of this weepy, ballady, lyrical, blah, 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 the shirt blowing as we're singing about better times or something like this. This was aggression. Well, in soy America. Maria de Buenos Aires, de Buenos Aires, Maria, ba, da, ba, ba. Ba, da, da. but even you singing that, suddenly I'm sitting up. I'm like, what, what? You have my attention. As opposed to like, oh, feelings, blah, blah, blah. You know, so. I told you, I don't I know. we have had that era. Yeah. I think it's coming to an end. Yeah, I'm I, I'm okay with seeing it go. And then four years from now, we'll be like, how come no one does a lyrical program? You know, how everyone uses the same pieces of classical music. <laughs> yeah, know, like it's coming back. Meditation from Tice, Jose Maria, uh, Caccini, Ave Maria, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, these are so the team I originally fell in love with was Angelica's team, which is um, Vasila and Valeri. But and here, you know what happens when you fall in love with anything related to Krilova? You have to be prepared for a loss. She I loves know. the silver medal, right? But as you were talking about like these brilliant masterminds, the Igors and the Marinas and all these things, I was like, and not the Angelica girlfriend, get it together. And him, Valeri in particular, is like one of the most stunning, stunning like Those cool ice dance. slides and cool yeah. things they were doing at the end of that program. Very nice. Yeah. They have the most gorgeous. They Extension and simpatico between the two partners. And the rotational lift at the end was like my uber fave. Okay, so now we're gonna go to Sophia and Daniil who randomly skated to Imagine because they saw Chalk and Bates do it to such great success that they thought we should do this too. They were third in the free, but fourth overall. But again, she looks like a dead ringer. She looks like if St uh, Stepanova and Sinitsina had a baby. Like she, she's like <laughs> the third sister or something. and. It is, there's like a reckless abandon to it. I was all about it, loved it. Then there's Sophia and Alexander who ended up third overall. They at times were very exciting. And oftentimes when they do like the patterns and stuff like that, I got bored. 
but I still see these four teams as major front runners coming up. Listen, yeah, Farley White's boy that likes to wear the open shirt, he's gonna have to find another partner. There's like some rumor that he dumped a partner over email. I mean, we're gonna have to start emailing some other, we're gonna have to get him with the right person at the right time and yeah, do it. I mean, gotta get it You done. mean Somerville? Yes, yes. Yeah, he's he, I, he was, uh, put him with Jeffrey Chen. Jeffrey Chen. Let, Ju let Julen have a total meltdown. <laughs> And uh, even so, and going over to the pairs, like, you know, again, we're talking about pairs that can't land side by side triple toes. Here we're watching the triple Lutz Euler triple sows. We're watching, you know, double well, X Euler triple sows. The second place team here looks like they have more of a future in uh, Artemia and Nazar Show. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I can't read my writing. Okay. Ilya and Mikhail. Yeah. <laughs> the, the double axle Euler triple, I mean, what we're seeing is kind of like how. Four years ago in the singles discipline, Trusova and Sherbakova were starting to learn quads. Um, and you know, it really changed where four years ago, state of the art was doing triple triples and backloading your entire program, right? And then right. it was but the juniors were already doing quads. Now the juniors are already coming up with double axle Euler triple sow. Uh, the team who won here, who the girl looked a little bit tentative and maybe, I don't know, they didn't look the most like- senior. Well, he doubled the, the first lots when they did the triple lots Euler triple sow. But the yeah, they got credit yeah. for the double lots or the triple sow and they did side by side triple loop, but you can just see, oh, the technical level of pairs is changing. Well, at least at least for them in at Russia. Least, yeah. yeah. But that expectation is going up, right? right. And also had pairs elements. It wasn't like, oh, we just have two single skaters that are going to do some wow jumps, and now we have to deal with the rest. The throws were lovely. Um, the uh, on Natalia and Ilya who won, great light landings to all of their throws. Wonderful height in the triple twists. Yeah, yeah. big fan. So big, overall, big fan. The 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 technical level is shifting. I mean, come on. You watch any of the U.S. pairs try to do side by side jumps. I mean. We're, we're getting to the point where at least we're doing two triples side by side. We're not doing the side by side double axles anymore, but we're still like white knuckling it on like four out of five teams. Okay, let's, yeah. let's yeah. be real. Okay. These, uh, these juniors, these two teams could make a real splash also coming forward. Again, I, I think you're right. Ilya and Mikhail seem to have more long-term potential and nicer look, but they just randomly imploded in the long. I don't know if that was pressure from being first after the short or what, but yeah. no. Well, let's discuss the ladies, what everyone discussed. And let's discuss Mizukatieva, who seems like she is the front runner to be uh, the junior world champion. Uh, That's why I giggled when you were talking about the Chinese pair in 99. What did they skate to? Mulan? Yes, which... <laughs> Full circle, okay. <laughs> she's skating to a Vanessa May version <laughs> of Reflection. Yes, yes. But I have to say, um, interest, uh, interesting, and I have some detailed notes because we know that the fans obsess over the Russian ladies, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I really watched uh, and took some notes here. Um, I find Akatieva the most similar, if I had to compare her to someone to Valieva in terms of being a well-rounded skater. Uh, I think that Akatieva has better skating skills than many of the other Ateri skaters. She has a much softer knee, um, but I find that her strengths are really in the technical side of skating and her skating skills compared to the other Terry girls I think are stronger. What I think she lacks is that there's just not a lot of performance going on and it's really glaring in the free skate. I thought that her short program was such a team two breeds of formula. It was though they just picked like the fifth option of music that we would have picked for Camila Valieva, right? Like it could have been the Eric Radford Storm music. It could have been um, the- I uh, just wrote same, same, same. I have seen they, this. Every, I no, have seen this. Of it. We have seen the transitions. The double axle to the leap was out of Costa Naya's Angel program. Okay, like they literally, it was like a highlights reel. There's just no individuality. Oh, I was like, oh wait, someone in Team Two Breeds is now doing a back Charlotte. That's new. Like literally, like it was like, oh, one thing we haven't seen before. I mean, it doesn't look necessarily special. Um, or with the music. She has good posture. She went for a triple axle, triple toe combo, which the top juniors are going to do at the world championships, as we're gonna see here. I thought she had very good spins. I thought that all of- the Can we talk that out for a second? Is that because the juniors are not allowed to use their triple axle as their axle jump? Correct. 
So it's a double well, S. It needs to be updated. It needs oh, to be. Oh, we need to let them do quads in the short program. Okay. Yes. If you want to hold out that for juniors or whatever, fine. Give the senior ladies their quads in the short and give these junior ladies triple axles. If you're going to ask that they have them in order to win. Um, it's very like Todd L. at the senior and the short program, right? Join the double axle solo. But um, yeah. I thought she has great posture. The music is so similar to Valieva and Sherbakova. It's so formula. It's just ambient. Um, I liked her footwork overall. Um, her allusion to the loop was a little bit of a scary moment. So I just want to say in terms of compared to the rest of the program, that was probably um, the weakness. Um, but I do think that in the, and I think that the the short music suits her, this ambient kind of style. I'm, I'm reminded of their other ladies and general pleasantness, right? But I thought that, in the free where they used a little bit of a different piece of music and bolder colors than they usually use in a costume. We usually see paler colors from them. Um, I thought that there was no connection to music and that she didn't have a lot of expression. And I also thought that on some of her triples, she didn't have a lot of height um, on some of them and they were smaller. And she's someone that I could see maybe winning like, you know, remember it's, we've got two years before she can go to senior worlds. And that's her problem because that, I mean I remember when we first when I first saw her like two seasons ago or something like that I thought oh dear is she going to be a spoiler for the Olympics only to realize how much time she has to kill in juniors which is very dangerous for this camp. I think yeah. she could you know be a junior world champion once or twice and maybe you know senior worlds once and that's a career that yeah. that could happen and that happens in gymnastics all the time. It just yeah. seems like the the speed of which skating is progressing. Right. Not shading necessarily this person, right? This skater. The sport is progressing at such a level that someone maybe two years younger than Akatieva may just be timed better. Right. We don't even know yet. Yeah. Right? So that's what I'm Yeah, the way it's going and how young it skews now. Again, our next Olympic champion, we may not have met yet, really. We right. hadn't met Valieva yeah. four years ago. Right. We had. Okay. Right. So, uh, yeah, I thought that I, she did pop um, a quad toe uh, in the free into a double. But, you know, overall, I mean, clearly the best in this field. Yeah. Clearly the best. Yeah. It was a surprise. Everyone. So, hmm. <laughs> she did the triple axel to the leap like Coaster Naya, but in the free skate. Um, <laughs> She has all the Valieva arms going on, yeah. Did you see anyone look happy or like they enjoy skating at this event? No, because it's so much pressure and it's so cut. I saw such heaviness, such darkness. I saw girls coming off the ice in need of a hug and not getting it. I saw children, like children, putting an amount of pressure where they, it looked like they were going to throw up and cry like before they even started. And that to me at one point, a part of it felt like I was watching active abuse. I, this is, I'm not saying this about any one person. I'm just, it just gave me a very irky feeling as a, as a viewer. Cause I was like, they hate this. So I'm not quite sure. Compare well, that. I got immense pressure and, um, very competitive, very serious, and there's so much depth, and these skaters know that their futures depended on this competition. And you think about that serious pressure, you're physically, Dave, if you feel that, what do we do? We go down and in, which is the opposite of performance. It's the opposite of presentation, and that's what you get. You get that anxiety on the ice. And then as a viewer, I'm left being like, what is this? Why am I well, watching? I think, like, I think what's happened in Russian skating is that every like two years, it becomes more and more competitive and it becomes more competitive at the junior level and at the advanced yeah. novice level. Like it's starting to become so competitive. So like when there was Tara and Michelle, there was like Jenny and Sasha and this, you know, and those juniors were like way cutthroat, right? This is happening in Russia on like 10 times that where they're doing- And literally one -one. every season, like you're saying, because this could be a one and done for some of them. Yeah. I think for some of them, they see the girls above them doing quad toe. It's like, we better learn quad LUTs when we're 10, right? right? right. That's the level of intensity going on. 
And you have to think that all of the coaches are looking at who they can poach from this club and who should join Team Tuberidza and who's going to get locked into it. I mean, it is probably so cutthroat at this level. And this event was supposed to determine the junior world team. And I'm not convinced that it did. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I'm not convinced. Again, to... except you're saying Akatieva, I think the peers, I think they have a Akatieva tough call for going. dance. Akatieva's yeah. going, and she's my prediction to likely win uh, the junior world title. But what made it interesting is that Petrosian was not in the top three, but Petrosian has been a top skater this season, was so brilliant uh, at the senior nationals. At senior nationals, yeah. And just, you know, some mistakes here kept her. And I have to say... And she apparently is someone that Team Two Parisa really believes in. They really like her feisty personality. They, the, the timing of her career they think could work well. I think Team Two Parisa has enough political power to sway the decision to be made at like the Russian Cup final. Mm. You know, best two out of three. Yeah. Because I actually don't think that the girls that finished second and third here were convincing enough. Um, no. no, I mean, even, well, so Madelkina, like, yes, may have ended up second, but it's a very deceptive second. Oh, let me tell yeah. you, I'm so sick of the fans that are like, oh, she can do all the different quads. Yet yeah, she falls on them all the freaking time. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. I will say, for everything we say about Team Two Brisa, when you judge their elements, you know that those programs have been freaking trained and every element looks like it has been scrubbed and trained in terms of uh, whether you like the technique or not, it has been drilled. Every yeah. single spin. When you watch Sam Adele can do a spin, you're like, girl, we are traveling and we are going. I mean, those team dude reads skaters, it's like a robot in terms well, of- Well, talk about Petrosian. Her spin positions were undeniably beautiful. The levels undeniably given. I, only a three on the step sequence, but like uh, the spin levels through the roof, through the roof. I will say she is grittier than she is technically sound. Um, and what Petrosian, I mean, you're saying. Yes. And we yeah. saw that, I think, when we saw her try a quad toe and then they moved to the quad loop. Uh, at times when she does her toe jumps, I've noticed it on the flip, on the Lutz, in a, she tends to like her axis like shifts as if she's like moving back in the air. Um, it's a little bit strange compared to some of the other skaters. It has to do with the speed of her arms and legs. Um, but well, it's interesting you say that because she does that a Terry thing or the a Terry camp thing where like the upper arms reset in the middle of their, her triple triple, right? Yes. So she lands the first triple and then she really does exactly what you're saying. I don't know if it came out of those combos where she just resets the arm and shoves herself. Yeah. Talk about how they use the arms more than the legs to generate speed. And if you look it at- It looks Adelia, effortful, yeah. You look at Adelia's double axle, it's very small. Okay, it's very small um, compared to some of the other jumps. You could watch a Katieva and then you watch Petrosia. It's a different size. Yeah. What yeah. I will say that Adelia has over a Katieva is feistiness, passion, intensity, performance. This girl freaking loves to perform. And she's known in the Russian press for being a little bit feistier. She likes to correct interviewers. She's very strong-minded and the coaches mm -hmm. like it about her. I think she's a future uh, Medvedeva, uh, Kostrnaya type personality. Um, you know, she's already dying on the ice or laying on the ice um, as a like a diva would uh, as a young <laughs> skater. And I love it. But what she pulls off a tango, she's not skating to some ambient music. She does the right. Billie Eilish to paint it black. I mean, she's giving you face the whole time. That's what I like about her. She needs a softer knee uh, when and her skating skills. If you look at her twizzle, it's on like kind of like a hard knee, not as bad as Veronica Gilina, who's is like truce of a bad, but um, she really does. Um, she has a little bit of X factor, even if her technique is not necessarily the best i think she'll will those quad loops to happen at least for this show. oh yeah oh yeah i mean they were lovely at, at senior nationals i believe in a terry and i believe that a terry will get this girl to the medal stand at the world junior figure skating championships yeah you know what i think adelia should go she's my vote oh uh, anyway. to me i would i would send her no question no question now it's interesting you bring up jill and i so i'm curious why are we so interested in Jilla? I know that she was like one of the early talented skaters with a Terry, went to Plushenko. I know them, you know, this, that, and the other. And the Mother wanted to be a coach at 
the mother wanted to be a coach at Sambo 70. But Terry said, absolutely not. Yeah. Absolutely not. She, the mother now coaches with them at uh, Angels of Plushenka. She had left with Rizanov. She was on the show Ice Age. She can do, she was one of the first ones to land quads and they're like truce of a quads, but she's also been injured. So she got injured this fall. Now, I think her skating skills are on par with appropriate Trudeau. for her music. They match <laughs> the music of the short program, which included cash register sounds and items being thrown away. It was like some weird ASMR. That's her free skate music that she has no business skating to. Do you remember? Oh, Tell me, please. No, oh, wait, what does she remind me what she skated to? Love story. <laughs> A, there, there are bigger offenders coming up in the music category, by the way. I've written them But down. she's been injured. And we saw that she has some of the jumps back on Instagram. But she's been one of these talents where, um, listen, I think Team Two Breeza might take her back if the mother didn't come with. Because she's a real physical talent. And they probably should take her. And she's got a younger sister who's also very talented. But she's clearly, something is off in the training in my opinion that we because the talent seems there but it, the, the last few fun. times we've seen her I, i'm expecting something that i don't end up getting She's now the one that also better suited for this in the long run than sam Adelkina. okay yeah she, someone that i would bet on more get behind but okay we haven't seen her put it all together she had a horrible season last year wasn't she 18th at some competition uh a domestic event and then this season obviously not her strength but she's really got the big talent if she can be healthy. Because then what's the, the Zaninina, or she mm -hmm. was doing pretty well and then suddenly tanked it here. Yeah. Absolutely just tanked out of nowhere. It's, the skating is lovely. And so I just left thinking, what a shame that this has imploded this way. I couldn't figure out what was going on with that. Cause yeah. she had so, she had, she had some really lovely skates this fall. So that surprised me. Yeah, and the thing that really upsets me when I look at Sofia Moraviova is that she has some real talent and better knees, I mean, uh, and better, some real ability overall, but they package her like she's the Brady Tunnell of Russia. Like what you don't like, on? You don't like when she wears a Thanksgiving tablescape for her free skate? <laughs> It's like, is that a cornucopia glitzy? What does that have to do with Great Gatsby? What is happening? And she reminded me of Amber Glenn with her fake artistry, it was like, feelings like emotions it was just sort of arbitrary yeah, i don't know find it, she's somehow refreshing compared to some of the other skaters there's less of a heaviness although she seemed very upset after her performance well, she's like, one of those that i was like i don't want to see a child this young put under this kind of pressure and have this kind of response it was tough to watch her she response. struggled on two of her three triple axles at this competition turning out of them and she was third here and you know, falling on a triple lutz on the lines, will you still love me? And she comes off the ice and I just think, you know, let's- rush. They won't rush, let's, they won't. Let's rush. ignore for skate, let's ignore skating world for a second. I saw a human being in desperate need of a hug and she got ice cold responses from the two of them. It was a disappointing coaching moment, I felt. I think she should be encouraged. I see very her going- grand for Russia. What are you talking about? Like, I wasn't surprised, <laughs> what are you talking about? It's like, give this girl a hug, because if she lightens up, I have a feeling the jumps will be there. I mean, she has the triple axle, triple toe, obviously didn't go well to the Nimikita Pa, you know, that lovely one about an affair and an abortion in the song. That's a neat choice for a child. Um, <clears throat> but, but I just, you're, you're right. She's at least different. So you kind of root for her. I think her spot on the world team, world junior team could be in jeopardy, what do you think? Yeah, I wouldn't send Samadelkina. I'm sorry, Jonathan. This girl has been so inconsistent. This Davidov, yes, he can teach different quads and people like wanna have an alternative. And I know that people have been interested in this coach for a while. He's shown himself in interviews to be on brand for Russia. And he seems, um, you know, this skater spoke up. She didn't like her scores after uh, the short program. I have to say- oh, she, Excuse me, she didn't like her scores. She had the shakiest triple axel and got like a plus, almost a plus two GOE on it. I think her scores were generous in the short program. 
I find her to look untrained in terms of the full program when you look at her next to Petrosian and Akatieva, that the details look less trained. The spins traveling look like maybe we haven't done them after these quads. Um, the quads. So I'm look gonna ask a question. I'm a little, I'm a little nervous too, and I mean no offense by asking it. So we're already bracing ourselves. She looked to me, I couldn't quite tell if something about her packaging was a little different than I recall from the fall, or if potentially she was ill. She well, looked rather pale to me. Her nose looked very red. You know, it just looked like someone who might be dealing with a sickness of some, I'm not saying COVID or anything like that, but like maybe she had something else going on that took her out of training or took her out of the It's cold in even. Also like- Yeah. Also like you can like get COVID anywhere now. Like, I don't know. It's still like the shame of having COVID. It's like, I don't know, like. But I don't know. So to me, I don't want to say she looked sick if she wasn't sick and that was just her makeup choice of reddening that area and making it more- The dress was the same, in the free at least, it was exactly the same as Russian nationals. I didn't, I don't remember. No. Is, look, she's not my favorite. Um, I just look in the standards of Russian skating. I expect everything to look really trained and on point and polished. And to me, her posture is so not. Um, mm. And the hunching, and it looks less practiced. And I just have a hard time with it. You know, I, she does get a lot of air in that quad lots. But again, if you can't land these things and you're not offering a substitute for the points. It's tough. I, I would, I do see her on the cutting block. Yes. From even, despite a, a silver medal here, which I don't. Please. Yeah. I yeah. think it, I would I, send I, Sophia over her. I would, all these Sophias going to. I would is vote. It and Sophia. Um, I was in the <laughs> I was in Petrosian, and I was in mm -hmm. Moriova to the junior world. Yes, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Now, what did you think of Eliza? This was this was a skater I wasn't recalling, and I, well, Volgolova. Um, so here's yeah, I newer, right? She lands a lot of jumps on the whole blade. It almost looks like back on the heel. Did you notice that when it, they were not soft? So you're supposed to land on the toe pick and ride right through. Right. Your, and this is why some of her things like seem heavy, and it was just okay. willing them to happen, but it wasn't. Very well, elegant. she was one, she does, and it, they do this at Sambo 70 sometimes, the, the spirals almost look like swimming. Like she's trying to like propel herself forward. So she starts doing like a breaststroke and then like the leg kind of goes up behind her. But doing music to Anastasia. It's an interesting Romanov choice. I wouldn't call Yakov Yurovsky. Um, okay, so then when she does the free skate, fear not, she's doing Funny Honey from Chicago with all of the um, uh, male anatomy jokes written within there and about cheating. On brand and... for Russia, Jonathan, on yeah, brand. For yeah, Russia. I was yeah. like, what a great choice for this young woman, ridiculous. But again, threw out some quads, two nice quad toes. I, I, I have a feeling we're gonna see a lot of her even though she's, she's very, she, she looked almost like a novice when she skated. And, I was just surprised to see those quads from her. So, but I don't see her in the equation despite her her sort of strong fourth place presence. No, I think more I think Moriova has earned it over her. Yeah. Yeah. Not a not a great outing for Plushenko. Well, Shane, because you know, he's been a little bit quieter after this championship, which is sad. I enjoy a good um Blue Shank, a moment. I hope that we will see him revitalized uh for this Russian Cup final. I like that. You know, perhaps we can refight. Because when, now, when is the Russian Cup final? This is turning into Korean Federation. Listen, they always do it. Remember that the Russian Cup final is how we got, we backdoored to Demisheva out of the world to get Medvedeva in when Tarasova got that good work done um, right. in 2019. Right. So, listen, this is on brand for Russia. D d listen, if you're not ready for, you know, if you, if you well, can't, so, get, so I'm just curious. Get out of the when, forest, okay? Will they do it after the Olympics? I hope so. I mean, because this is the Russian timing. final. Also, wait, wait, the Russian Cup final. Yes, it's the weekend after uh, the Olympics. It'll be in Mordovia. Remember the Mordovian ornament competition that year? That's right. That's right. 
Um, it'll be the Russian Cup final um, February 23rd to the 27th. So right after the Olympics, we'll get to have the juniors fighting it out again. I think it's perfect. You know what? I'm here for it. And then it probably leads right into Junior Worlds, which then leads into Worlds, which yes. means we're going to be so tired. <laughs> well, that's going to be March 7th to the 13th. You know what? Okay. Great. I'm thrilled. Fine. Okay. Bring it on. Yeah. Listen, it'll be so fabulous. Okay. We we'll have people. It will be like... You won't have to worry that you're going to go through skating withdrawal because we're going to have some. We won't give you the choice. <laughs> Terry and Plushenko are going to be fighting as soon as the Olympics are over. Listen, Yana and Virginia, they are going to be spinning in the press for something. Okay. Yeah. Terry's going to have gotten too much attention when she sweeps the ladies' event. Plushenka is going to come ready to the Russian Cup final, ready to like slay her or at least fight with her in every Russian media outlet. I mean, I am so ready for it. Russian mafia. Show me Russian mafia, okay? Hold <laughs> <laughs> well, the edge looks sexy, everyone. <laughs>